Hola, ¿qué tal? Para esta lección vamos a hablar del imperfecto. We are going to take a look at the imperfect in Spanish. Um, hopefully by now you've t you have learned the preterit, a preterito, which is used to talk about completed actions in the past. Right now we're going to take a look at the el imperfecto, the imperfect, which is also a form of the past tense. We won't be putting the imperfect and the preterit together yet. We will eventually, but not yet. So um, what is the imperfect, you ask? What is it used for? So the imperfect, again, is a form of the past. It has um, several different uses, so I'm going to tell you what those are right now. Uh, one, it could be used to give background information to a story, like describing uh, what things were like, uh, what you know, what the weather was like, or what the house looked like, um, background e background dis events or descriptions of things happening. Um, it can also be used to talk about things that were a mat matter of habit, like if um, when you were a kid you went to the park every day, um, you know, something that happened over and over and over again. You're going to use the imperfect. Um, number three, we're going to be talking about age. If um, you want to talk about how, how old somebody is, or was, sorry, you're going to use the imperfect rather than the preterite. Um, to talk about time, uh, saying what time it is. It was three o'clock. We're going to use the uh, the uh, imperfect again. And then um, lastly, for, I just want to say, think of the imperfect as ongoing in the past. The preterite we use to describe completed actions, things that uh, yesterday I went to the store, um, I punched your friend, uh, we went to the park. Those are completed actions that we did yesterday, for example. The imperfect are generally things that were ongoing in the past. The more you, you use this, the more you'll see the difference. If you can think of those, think of ongoing, that will really help you out when you eventually have to distinguish between the preterite and the imperfect. So, to conjugate verbs in the imperfect, it's actually a little bit easier Actually, it's a lot easier than the preterite because there are, there are only three irregular verbs in the imperfect, which I'll give to those to you in a different video. So we are going to look at how to conjugate three regular verbs in the imperfect. The first word we're going to look at is cantar. So this is how you conjugate a regular AR verb in the imperfect. Uh, it goes as follows. Yo cantaba. Tu cantabas. Él a usted cantaba. Nosotros cantábamos. Vosotros cantabais. Ellos a ustedes Cantaban. So for all uh, AR verbs in the preterite, all regular AR verbs in the preterite, or imperfect, I keep saying preterite, in the imperfect, that you're going to take off your AR and add those endings, aba, abas, aba, abamos, abais, and aban. Uh, and it would be like saying, um, I used to sing, or I was singing, uh, for example. So for an ER verb, we'll look at comer really fast. The comer in the imperfect would be comia, comias, comia, comiamos, comiais, and comia. Let me give you vivir really quick too. Vivia, vivias, vivia, viviamos, viviais, vivian. So right away you should notice that, oh, er and ir verbs, the conjugations are exactly the same in the imperfect. In the preterite, it works the same way. Er and ir verbs are the same in the preterite, regular verbs. And then in the imperfect, regular er and ir verbs are also exactly the same, which makes it nice. You'll also notice that er and ir verbs over the I on like the comilla, for example, there's an accent mark. There are accent marks on all of them in that position, which is which, while accent marks could be difficult, if, if you can remember that there are accent marks on all of them right there, you'll know it. And then for the AR verbs like um, cantar on the nosotros form, cantábamos, there was an accent mark over that A right there. It's just on that A. The rest of them don't have accent marks. So uh, the, that's how you conjugate AR, ER, and IR verbs in the imperfect, the ongoing stuff in the past tense. What I'm going to do for you right now is I'm going to put up uh, 10 sentences here on the screen and I want you to uh, conjugate the verb that I give you into the imperfect. So once they come up, pause the videos because it's only going to be like a five second little clip with the sentences. So pause it, jot down your answers, then I'll give you the answers and um, if need be I'll give you an ex explanation of each an answer as well. All right, so now that you have, uh, you've done those 10 sentences, you have your answers done, um, number one would be, hablaba, yo hablaba con tu madre. Dos would be, se cansaba. A little while ago we learned the reflexive verbs, you take the se, you put it in the front, change it if necessary, you don't have to for she, so it'd be se cansaba. El número tres would be, dibujaron, dibujaron. Cuatro es, jugábamos, jugábamos. Cinco es, tenías, tenías. Seis es, se aburría, se aburría. Siete es, trepábamos, trepábamos. Ocho es, andaba, andaba. Nueve es, 
visitabas, visitabas. Y el número 10 es, nos enojábamos, nos enojábamos. So, um, hopefully you got most of those right. Again, it's not too hard. If you can memorize, just say, uh, cantar and vivir, or cantar and comer. The endings for ER and IR verbs are exactly the same in the imperfect. And the AR verbs are all the ABBA stuff. Um, so just study and memorize them. And then um, take a look at my other video on the imperfect so you can see the uh, three irregular verbs in the imperfect. And then um, you'll have them down. Imperfect is a lot easier than the preterite. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll get back to you.